Hello everyone. I am going to be darning socks today. So So anyway, these are my hand spun socks, which uh, you all must have seen earlier. And um, it, uh, they still haven't developed a hole in them, but they definitely have, you know, have thinner spots out here in the heel. So um, I need to just reinforce that. And... Um, if you saw my previous post, I did find uh, this darning tool, which actually I really like. I have already uh, darned one um, sock of mine, a pair of socks, which was made with uh, hand dyed yarn. It wasn't hand spun, but they were really old socks and it really did an amazing job of fixing those. So I'm hoping I can get the same effect out here so has anyone else used one of these uh, I think they were originally they, it's a really old tool uh, a Russian maybe and uh, now they are manufactured by other people uh, this is not a paid promotion or anything I purchased this on Etsy and I really enjoyed it and um, so I'm just so I would, you can see there are thin spots, you know, in between out here, and that's what I want to enforce. And rather than, you know, passing the yarn through as a knit pattern throughout, um, what you do is you make a woven patch over it, which I think is a lot more stronger and a lot better. So, so first I'm just trying to line the area. So I know there are thin spots further on here but I'm going to start here and my patch can be only this wide and then after that maybe I'll move the sock and make another patch on the other side but this is where I want to start I think I want to go maybe uh, that deep I think is good um, hold on one of my channels is talking back to me so let's stop that okay Hopefully you can still hear me and see me. People say something so that I know you're there. Or if it's the case that I'm not seeing uh, your comments, then let me know that as well. So let me just check on to Facebook and see if I'm actually live. I think I am. Okay. So after you have placed your uh, thing here you need rubber bands and I should have two of them one of which I have dropped so it did come with some very tiny uh, rubber bands which broke almost instantly so I just got these big asparagus kinds hey Suzanne Thank you for letting me know somebody is watching. Okay, so this is the area. So first I put a rubber band to secure that this is the area which I want to down. And then this fits on top of that. And I want that first needle to be around where my first column of warp will go. So I place that there and it's vertically down. And I attach the other rubber band so it stays in place so basically this is how I want to position it I kind of know my horizontal line will probably be at this start of this blue yarn hey Catherine thanks for joining in from YouTube as well so it's good to know that somebody is watching and I'm not talking to myself and there are many you know good professional videos of this online and on Instagram so uh, this is just one way 
how I'm doing it. Um, I do have some of my hand spun out here, which I'm going to be using for this. And uh, this is some, uh, it's the same yarn, but it is chain plied. So I think it'll be stronger. This was a regular three ply, which actually wore out faster. Now I need to, uh, this is going to have like, uh, 10 warps I'm gonna do like 12 on this you know it goes that much so there'll be some extra so that's three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and that should be good so so this is like you know when you're warping your loom basically you need to know how much yardage you need and that's what this is so we're just going to take that yarn going to thread it and on my previous sock i used commercial yarn to do the weaving as well which i thought i would do for this but since i already had the matching yarn and everything and this is more yarn than i need i thought might as well just try this so I know I want my starting of my warp to be along this horizontal line so that'll be my first spot I could start anywhere below but I want to basically poke out from that column of stitches there and I want to leave enough to uh, weave in later and then what you do is basically uh, you take it and you warp it around you want to keep these horizontal facing up so that it's easier to pull them through and you want a little tension on them as well and since I'm trying to aim in my camera at a weird angle there so that's that's how you you just pass it on the hook is basically what you do and then take your needle which hopefully and stuck with a lot of fiber and uh, does not have yarn tangles in it and I probably have way too much length out here and then you just move on to the next column of stitches it doesn't have to be super exact but uh, well I'm glad Melody that you're enjoying this it, it's 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 much faster for me to do it this way than to actually weave in for the socks so i know my first darn that i did took me around half an hour or so and uh, this one might take me longer because i'm chatting along with it and you want to apply some tension to it so that you know that it's not very loose but i'm still going along the same horizontal line out here yes darn it exactly nancy so so there is a limitation to how big a patch you can do based on the size that you get uh, this is a 10 stitch one i know you get 14 stitch 21 28 i wish i'd gotten a 21 but i actually can make do of this one as well so after you get it started it goes a little faster just like in real weaving and you just hook on to the next move on to the next column of stitches and that's what secures it so, so you know you have decent tension out there that's good go to the next So we'll see how long this hand spun patch works. I might make a commercial one later, but I was like, since I do have the yarn, why not? So, so I'm covering all the thin spots in the process and maybe I'll make another patch on the other side after I've done this one. But 
I did realize after my previous sock that I start, like to start on the left and make a patch and the next patch I like to go right. Yeah, I'm using the hand spun. It's the same uh, fiber which I had spun, but I'm using the chain ply uh, yarn for my hand spun, for, for my patch now because it's definitely was stronger i'm not using the regular three ply because that's what this yarn was for the sock and clearly it did not last long so we are not going to be using that yarn for a patch though it might be fine because you know it's woven and not knitted but might as well use a stronger yarn so so all these hooks you have to make sure that they are facing up right now because that makes it easier to um, put them in. I too had to use a very dark yarn though. But it's fine. And this will be the last warp. And that's it. And then we can just pull it down here. okay so that's so you can see it's kind of a little crooked so now i can kind of straighten it to make sure it still looks decent enough because there is a certain tendency to you know uh turn it in a certain way or the other but this will be fine now where did i pass that thing from okay so that's not So I clearly used a lot more extra yarn than I needed. I don't need so much, but but the extra yarn we can start using it in our uh, warping now. I mean, uh, in our, as a weft. So there we go. So that's basically where my patch is gonna be. If any time I go off screen, just chat and see okay so again my bottom line is not very horizontal but after I do my first weave it should be fine so when you do the weaving you basically if you're moving right to left you move all your pegs towards the left that's what right makes the alternate um, threads rise up and you basically uh, secure your yarn on the edge which actually it already was secure but now it becomes habit and then you can easily pass your yarn you don't have to like the picking of the threads becomes a lot easier to move your yarn across you know if you were actually darning you would be going over and under so this makes it a lot more easier so you pass it along and then you have to go to the other thing so when you're going right to left you just switch over now in order to push the weft down um, I use uh, this long it's a machine knitting double-ended tool uh, you could use, you know, a long stick or something. Anything that is smooth or a longer darning needle would work better. But I like to use this and really pack that down. And also make sure everything is going horizontal. I can see it's going a little bit below out here than here. I should probably do that warp again, but it will be fine. Hopefully. Or maybe I should just change it let's just change it since we are doing this let's so i've switched it back let me take out this warp thread if i can and move the last few warp threads let me just put them in a little bit below than what i did yes you make a tiny little shed that's what it is and that's what is very convenient about this because the making of the shed when you just have threads going back and forth that's where the problem usually lies 
and in this case um, it slightly up. so it was just the last few warp threads which I want to make a little bit below than where they were I think that's better so now it looks more more or less horizontal yeah yeah that looks better okay so now we move it there anchor it out here and you keep anchoring it on either side when you're weaving and I think what I'll also do is maybe increase the uh, tension on the warp threads on the other side because you know they do loosen up when you're starting off so but once the setup is done it does go a lot faster much better now we can so now just switch over to that side again make sure you have your shed will open up easily yeah might as well fix it when it's easy to fix and you know I've realized that you can rush it but if you uh, don't have a nice edge to it it doesn't look neat so now you can see it's a much nicer horizontal line which is what I was hoping for so now, and then again, now when you go to the other side, you want to anchor it. And then, you move it onto the other side, and then you can use your, uh, I use this long machine knitting double-ended tool because it has a rounded edge. It does not split my yarn, and I can use that to pack my weft down and you can also use your needle itself I have I was finding that I was my lines were coming crooked because you know I can't hold it straight enough for that same steady um, and again I'm not going to push it all the way down right now I'm going to change my um, shed and then pack it down because that packs it up a lot better and then go here and here I'm trying to follow the same column of stitches where I'm anchoring it so that it comes out more vertical but again there's there's no rule to it, it I just found it that it looks neater and then we can move on to the next shed there we go again change the shed now i can use the same needle i'll show you what happens it's possible you don't have to so but i don't get a good enough grip to move down that's why i like this guy that i can pass it through and really push it down and make sure it's nice and horizontal so that gives a nice uh, finished edge to it as well and I like to keep a little tension on the warp but again you don't want to pull this too tight because then you know you'll land up getting the curves on the side so here again I'm trying to follow the same now my column of stitches you can see is kind of going a little bit wavered out there which is fine I'm not being too particular about it but I'm still trying to maintain a pretty much straight line and it's a sock you know you kind of it's not going to be perfectly horizontal anyway so that's the new shed just pass the needle through and you can keep changing your yarn after every few wefts as well and I know I'm going to run out of yarn which is fine because 
I, I don't mind having a shorter length. So I should probably change my shed and that's what makes it back better. There we go. See, it makes a really nice, I don't know if you can see in the close-up, it really compacts it down very well. And it makes, you know, it takes the curvature well. I've seen that it was wearing very well on my previous sock that I fixed. So I'm kind of sticking to that. And again, we'll move up so that it's anchored and going to the next row. Again, our shed is nice and open. You can pass your yarn through. And then just pack it in. And it, it's a really, thanks Nancy. Yeah, it's, it's very satisfying to do. I never enjoyed the whole process of darning anything. Um, I think it was Stephanie Pearl McPhee who said, oh, what is darning? Which basically means darn it and throw it off. Um, how many tools on this? Uh, this has 10 uh, needles on it. And uh, I think they have 14, 21 and 28. Uh, they do tend to be very pricey. I think I paid around $40 for this one. Uh, so, you know, it, it does come at a price. And the more needles you get, the more expensive it gets. And the price jumps exponentially. And uh, I, by the way, I'm not getting paid for this promotion or anything. I did purchase this tool. I wish I had purchased the... Uh, I would say 14 needle would be good or 21 also because you can use lesser number of needles. You don't have to use all the hooks when you're weaving. So I think 21 would have been a better thing in case I wanted to make a patch for almost the entire heel at once. I think that would have been better. But it's just, um, I think that comes to around $120 or something. It's, it's a much price. So I still don't know whether uh, I would be leaning to that because of the price but um, and then the 28 one is also nice but you know that I would say is like making bigger patches on denim or jackets or something like that that's so probably doing fancier work and um, and if you were just trying to darn a hole this would be a lot easier like 10 needle is all you need what I'm trying to do is reinforce a heel so I'm kind of trying to make a patch over a bigger area than like there was no hole in this it was just some thin spots in this heel which I'm trying to cover up so that's what's a little different in this case let me change the shed and this yarn of course because it is hand spun and it is merino you know probably this patch won't last much longer but I kind of wanted to make a patch with a hand spun as well and see how the weaving looks. And I think the weaving looks a lot cooler with a hand spun. So if it doesn't work, I know I can make a commercial yarn patch on top of this. So, so it's not the worst thing. And this is the best part I like is how easy it is to make the shed and just pass your needle through. Yeah, you could make the larger. So 21 stitches, uh, also, you know, 28 stitches. Like, this makes almost an inch. So twice of that would make, like, 2 inches. I would say 28 stitches would make, like, maybe 3 inches or smaller. 3 inches is also not big enough to make a pocket, really. So I don't know if I would recommend it for, like, pocket making. These are essentially really for darning or making patches. They are pretty small uh, the other thing issue with the 21 stitch or you know if you got 28 stitches is you would need a longer needle than this to pass it through so that's another thing I don't know how much I would like that part of the process so everything has its pros and cons I think if I just use enough yarn, I probably would have enough for the whole 
patch, but that's fine. And again, you don't want to pull on that too much because then you'll end up distorting your um, patch. And then we just pass it through the new shed. Squeeze it down. Oops, something went off here. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, and I'm always trying to now make sure that I'm making a nice rectangle here. I wish I was getting sponsored for this, but I'm not. So, this ad hasn't been paid for. I'm not even mentioning, I've not even mentioned the, so they are on Etsy. It does take them a while to ship here. So, you know, be aware of that. Mine took maybe three weeks. I've heard some people it takes three months. So it all depends on how the postal service wants to treat you, I guess. I felt mine came fairly soon enough. But yeah, you just keep going back and forth like this and creating your patch. And so you're attaching it on either side. And at the very end, you actually just graft it onto your sock. And you can see it does go a lot faster once it's all set up. So it's simultaneously getting secured on the sides. It was already secured out here, and only the thing to be secured would be the top. Could have made my weft out of my warp out of commercial yarn too. So that is another option. You could use a, you know strong commercial or a silk embroidery thread. Uh, I've seen a lot of examples where that has been used. So that's also a possibility. And you want to of course keep weaving as close to the top as you can my pattern is shifting a little bit so i can see i can always like turn it around a little bit and kind of adjust it so it's nice and square and just pack down that weft nicely down there let's do it again oops don't want to be dropping my tools what are they doing Okay. There we go. And did I even drop my needle? I guess I did. Oh, there it is. Real things happening. You drop your needles, your dog comes in, distracts you, all that fun stuff happens. Fun things about doing stuff live, like Nancy and I were discussing the other day. Okay. So now we're going to anchor this one again. through here to turn the shed I 
think I split the yarn somewhere here. I hate it when I do that. So let's pass it through and see where I have split the yarn. I haven't. something weird out there but I think it should be fine Let, let's just pack it this way and then turn it I can almost see how this yarn is wearing out already with just the warping and all that maybe this patch might not last that much so there might be another patch coming around <laughs> with commercial yarn soon enough it feels like that but you know woven fabric actually lasts a lot longer even if it's weak because of the weave structure also keeps it together in knitted fabric, I feel that there's a lot of pressure on, you know, every knit stitch to hold the knitting together. Like one knit stitch breaks and stuff comes loose. So in this, even if, you know, something breaks, this is quite a nice compact fabric. So it doesn't, you know, bother me that much. I think it'll be fine. Plus, how will we know? And see, I, this entire thing I did on that same thread of yarn. I didn't even have to change. I didn't even do it with that intention. I thought I would do the weft with another yarn, but it seems to be going on fine with this. I will probably at the next, after the next warp, I'll stop and uh, means I will, I will swap out threads because I do need see I don't want it slipping around like that again and again so let's just do one more pass and then I'll show you how I swap threads okay that's gone there and I'm just going to anchor it down here and pull it off on the side of the knitting so I just pulled it out from there. Uh, can you use different warp and weft? Yeah, use commercial for warp. That's what I was thinking that I should probably have used a commercial yarn for the warp and done the hand spun for the weft. It would have been a lot more stronger maybe, but we'll see. Um, okay, so now I'm going to change, add more yarn which is still kind of being a little greenish in color, which is fine. And, and later at the end, you pull out all those loose ends and weave them up. So we are at the 34 minute mark and I'm almost close to being done. So as you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. So again, I started it off from that far end and later those loops will be pulled back so and I am chatting and talking so that takes a little extra time but I have seen that I can make a patch within half an hour and a pretty neat patch in half an hour which was something that was important to me and a patch that I actually like to make because I don't like darning socks or making patches or doing anything I just toss the sock and make a new sock I find that more easier but since these were my hand spun and they I had hardly worn them long enough I was like no I actually want them to last so that's what's happening now Uh, 
on again when you pull on the side you still want to make sure you're not pulling too tight so i'm i'm making sure that my vertical column i might have switched over to another column that's i feel is fine because you know the sock stretches in a certain way but i'm still trying to make a a, a straight um, rectangle here and not trying to be very wavy on the sides and that can happen easily if you're tugging on your weft yarn uh, a lot very much like how you know you're weaving and you know your ends cave in oh those are the mugs which are appearing in the screen out there those are the ones that uh, inspired me to make well the sock yarn inspired me to make the mugs that's the way it went I was wondering what came first, chicken or the egg. It takes me a while to remember. I do things in fiber and then it gives me an idea what to do in clay. And those are the mugs, uh, what you are seeing in the pictures there. So it has that fine knit, hand spun yarn look. And you want to go as close I'm still trying to make sure that you know my warp and weft threads are pretty much uh, straight and I'm just packing it a little bit more on this side that's why I like this long uh, needle tool that I can kind of adjust my weight and make sure that it's all you know still level I must have gone off a little bit earlier but it's not bad and go through this again and swap and back it down when it gets close you kind of have to do a little bit of that weaving in and out because you know the threads are getting a little tighter just a little anchor on this side now I try to almost move my project sideways so I can easily pass my needle through Thank you, Catherine. I'm glad you like the mouse. <laughs> Wonderful that the chicken inspired the egg. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Uh, so, sorry for the background sounds because parents are visiting. I think I missed a warp thread there but I, I'm just gonna let it go I can let go of things you know I, they don't have to be perfect especially when it comes to the end it kind of gets like the whole weaving in and out which is something I am not too crazy about doing that's why I have to learn to let it go so you will see that there will be one warp thread that is off in this, which is fine. Have to make it a little imperfect, otherwise what's the point? How will it look handmade? Yeah, so what's happening there is the, there is, there is a little misalignment in the needles in this particular tool that I have. So it always kind of like, especially in this fourth or fifth needle, when it gets tight, it gets a little harder to maintain that. But it is fine. 
I just have to be careful next time but so uh, regarding the mugs I currently do have um, most of them you know still saying they are out of stock but I am firing right now and then by Tuesday or Wednesday next week I'm going to have a big update with lots of things there are going to be mugs there are going to be some platters and stuff there are going to be oil bottles there's going to be creamers sugar creamers and stuff too so all that is also going to happen so new things coming and i don't know if you can hear background sounds but my parents are visiting so there's just more people, more sounds in the house now. Okay. See, this is where you have to go in and out because there's just such tight space there. This is where I miss the warp thread. But it's fine. It is fine. Don't have to redo the whole thing again. weaving in and out through these tight tight spaces and I don't know if I'll be able to make another pass at this but we'll see maybe I can you're all waiting for the end aren't you if there is anyone waiting still you all want to see how it ends how I weave in all the I can show you that. Maybe I can make another pass and then I'll be taking out the tool and I can show you how the whole thing is woven in. Okay, yeah, that's. I don't want to even compact it so much that at the top it looks like I've murdered somebody there. I want to see. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. So Nancy, I got my mother's, well, we found another sweater pattern, which hopefully would work well for my mom. So we're going to be working on that. I've got her to swatch again and she's already hating it because I want her to swatch in the round. And she's going like, I don't want to swatch in the round. I'm like, uh, if you're going to knit the whole garment in the round, you need to swatch in the round. There are nice, easy, cheat sheet ways of doing it. Oh, Catherine, you're waiting to finish too? Okay. I will finish it entirely. If my mom calls me for lunch, I'll blame you. How about that? You know how moms can be. Lunch is ready. It's getting cold. Why did you tell me to make it? Okay. I think that's enough space for me to wind up. Okay. So that was my last pass. I'm pretty happy. It looks nice and vertical. And there is just a little gap out there. I Maybe I could push. Uh, where I got my speed weave, Judy? I got it from Etsy. Uh, the shop name is Alexo. Alexon Ver is the person. And let me see if he has his Etsy shop. Yeah, Alex on over. Can you see that? That's the Etsy shop. And um, and like you can see, he has, you know, different, it's, it's a nice good step-by-step -step thing. And also it came with a pattern sheet to do different threads and all. But, you know, that you can get very creative as to how to do it. I'm just using it for basic weaving. Okay, so now that I've woven this up, it's time to secure that. But now I need to remove my weave. So I remove that first rubber band and then this guy can come loose by turning it around so you turn actually I should have moved the hooks vertical and there it comes off so that goes there 
and I still keep that rubber band down so that my fabric just doesn't you know be all loosey-goosey so that's my patch there are all my loops up there and now I'm going to fix them on and I'm going to come on stay down there will you okay so let's let's try to it's trying to change its shape on me okay so now that that looks better okay. nice and vertical straight up and now I have the open loops where I'm going to weave this thing in now while weaving it in I again I pick a column on top and then I pay attention to how the loop is oriented if it is uh, this is pretty dark so I'm sorry about that but if it is oriented in the same way I want to go in the opposite way so that it makes the weaving under over pattern again and then I pass it through that row back there and I wish my tension was kept there but secure it there and then again if I go in the same direction in which the loop is oriented then it doesn't make you know the weaving pattern so I just go in the opposite direction and that basically makes it like a finished weave under over pattern so I go through the loop in this direction and secure that and you can see it's making you know the under over pattern I know it's very dark so the number of hooks I'm using is 10 Judy and um, I would have gone with maybe 14 if 14 or 21 would have been my preference so but as you can see they do get pricey if you're on the site so and you can always make multiple patches which is what I had did with one of my pairs and it still works pretty good so I'm not like too bothered about it plus I enjoy making them like if it was something I dreaded I would be like no I just want to be done once then it would be a different thing but if I could uh, justify the expense of it then yeah I would have gotten a bigger set because I, I paid the same amount for my loom loom so or less than that actually for my uh, for my other tabletop loom so spending that much for uh, a tiny little loom which makes a one inch patch felt a bit much so I'm on the last and again going to go from the opposite side there so we have caught all of them and then I'm just going to pass this at the back okay so that's our finished patch it has been attached to the top as well this was one of the warp threads out here where I missed you cannot see it you won't be able to tell so now I can remove those rubber bands and pull out my disc from underneath and you can see that's where the patch is so yeah you can use just some of the hooks if you want to make a smaller patch that's true but the and uh, you know it's kind of nice like I said the only thing about the bigger patch two things actually which I think is why you might want to consider is firstly is the cost you know spending hundred and forty dollars or something on this feels too much to save a sock I think but it's not bad you can see now in the knit pattern where my thin spots were this, these are the patches I was trying to cover up now once you have turned it inside out and it is fuzzy because you know this is merino yarn it's going to fuzz up you can see these big big loops of yarn those are all the end yarns that we had so I'm just going to pull those out and I think that was it was there another one I feel there should be another one somewhere 
sure I probably clean my socks from the other end. And then the other thing is if your um, if you land up using a lot all the needles, you know, passing the your darning needle through all the loops at once, you'll need a longer needle, which you know it's not like the end of the world, but it's again something you have to consider. But again, not a big deal. Okay, there's a purple yarn there, which I missed. Where is it? I can always see it on the front side. I can't see it on the back side. Is it this? No. Dude, where are you? I should probably pass it at the back. It's here. Let's just, I'm going to pass this yarn at the back because I can't find it at the back. There's so much of fuzziness going on there. So I'm going to pass this at the back. And then now we have all our ends at the back side. And then we can just weave those in where our patch is, further enforcing it. But this is just so that you don't have loose ends out there. That's about it. So that goes there. And then add this one, which I just ended with. I didn't need such a big end to it. So what, what time we are on? Oh, 50 to 1 hour with chatting. Like I said, I have, I have made the patches in an hour earlier, uh, in less than an hour, like, 30 35 minutes so it doesn't really take that long but definitely gives a uh, results i'm a lot happier with so that's more important to me and these guys again these i will weave in horizontally because why not and it's not like a knitting patch like this is a woven piece so can just go back in there and it'll be fine. And as you can see, this yarn really fuzzed up quite a bit, so it's going to catch all these threads pretty easily. And then all the extra ends, you just chop, 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 and all the fuzziness all that crazy fuzziness can be removed but that's it on the inside you really don't feel it as anything in fact now when i wear it i'll be able to feel the other thin spots because that'll be that's a pretty neat patch i would say what do you think are y'all gonna give it a try so if anyone does land up getting the tool let me know what you think about it uh, I did see there were some posts in the machine sock knitting group where people had purchased it and they completely hated it. They said, ah, it makes uneven stitches and all of that. Well, it takes practice. My first patch wasn't that, that good. My second and third patch were very good. This is the fourth patch I'm making. So it takes practice, but you kind of learn how to do it. And like I said, I think I would have gone with maybe a 14 or 21 stitch patch and you can use fewer needles uh judy like you mentioned so that would be an option um but i just wish they were not so expensive i know i keep cribbing about it but it, since it is a good tool i think it's probably worth it uh if i know what i know now i would have saved for when at some point when i could totally justify spending that much i would have gotten the big patch i still might uh but but for now this is this is working really well like if i had a single hole you know it would be good and uh i don't have my ruler next to me i thought i did so somebody is um so you know i must have taken it down 
but anyway so that makes the patch and if you have any questions y'all can post here message me and uh, i'll see y'all later if y'all enjoy watching my videos and would like to support me uh definitely go on to the patreon uh link which is on the screen and uh you can uh give as little as three dollars a month and uh it can just help you know keep me motivated to make more videos so i don't have a very complicated patreon page you can enter at the lowest level and still get something out of it so there you go you're just supporting these live feeds well thank you judy oh that wool coat will be nice yes definitely this is how to fix it if you have really nice woolen fabric you don't want to toss away and stuff and and if you go on to look at uh their instagram handle um alexon over alexon were i think that's what it is i call it alex and onward but it's alexon were uh they have some really cool uh pictures and everything uh looking great you do a different way if a sock is getting thing would look more like knitting stitch only if a real hole the sock is at a space so i would use a darning egg yes yeah, so i have used the knitting stitch if the sock yarn is getting thin and i can st still see the path of my knitting like i could see in this i have done that and that's what it it just i never liked the finished look for it and because the yarn is so fuzzy i kept fussing over it and ultimately it just still made a knit stitch which you know didn't make a really a robust fabric this makes a really robust fabric and it's not so thick that i feel that i'm standing on something on my foot in fact uh the other sock i made which is currently in the wash actually um i added another patch next to this and i still cannot feel that seam in between so it's really flat and after you wear it one or two times it conforms to the shape of your foot really well and i think it's a win win now i'm wondering if i do need to make i can pass a disc in there and see if i do need another patch now here i don't see that thin a spot on this spot i did see pretty thin patches so i thought it was fine to do it here i'm actually fine so we're going to wear this out and see how long it lasts and I'm sure this side will wear out faster than this one does, so I might have to make a bigger patch then. So, so it's definitely fun. I I like it. Oh, want me to wear it? Well, I should get for lunch. I'm getting called for lunch. A woven patch on a knitted socks. Yes, it does look charming, and it's going to be on my foot. So that's so that's my foot, and you know that's my foot. and it'll be at the bottom of my foot that's where i landing up wearing my socks i usually wear them out at my toes but these hand spun socks for some reason wearing them out on the on the ball of my foot it's not wearing out at the heel either so it's like at the very bottom out here so just before the heel that's the ribbing there and everything else about the socks is really nice and good it's still nice and stretchy fits really well and that's that's where it this is commercial sock i get to see my wonderful feet wearing some sock but see there you go there you go need to do some yoga but see it's nice and flat it's actually pretty invisible for anyone else looking at it too because it comes directly at the bottom of my foot so cool anyway i'll get to lunch thank you for everyone joining me hope you had fun if you land up using this tool let me know whether you like it if you figure out some cool techniques or something i i have some ideas like i could make some fun things out of it so i will try that and uh, but if you come up with something let's let's share ideas and see what how cool these songs can look or i would love to see that jacket repaired 
judy so definitely all right take care everyone bye for now